right, so this is uh, this is going to be a different video. Like I said, um, I think I think I probably should have made this at I don't know months ago. I probably should have made this video, but this is this video right here is going to it's just going to give you the basics of what of what you really need to get started using oil paints. This is not acrylic. This is based on oil and oil only. So I hope that you find this helpful. I'm going to get started right away and we're just gonna to try to move through it pretty quickly so you can see just a few things that you need to get started. So the first thing that I wanna start off with is you're gonna need a canvas. Doesn't matter what kind of paint you wanna use, you're gonna, you know, the first thing is you're gonna need a canvas here. This particular canvas is the canvases that I use, uh, which are, they're made by Sunbelt Manufacturing Company and they're the best canvases in the world. That's just my opinion. Maybe somebody thinks different. These are the best. I'm gonna put a link below. Sunbelt Manufacturing. They are perfect for the wet on wet technique, or you know, if you wanna call it wet on, I don't know if it's wet on wet. I do a lot of dry scrubbing and stuff. Anyhow, these are perfect canvases. And these are gonna be the canvases that I use uh, throughout the rest of my time. All right. First thing out of the way, canvas, whatever size you want, no problem. Second thing you're gonna need, gotta have a palette. There are so many different palettes out there. Um, just get something cheap, right? You don't have to break your bank for a palette. Um, there's a wood palette. I think this was, I think this was 10 bucks at Michael's, at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or wherever, about $10. Okay, and look, there's even some little knives, 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 not, there's some things in here that you can use to mix paint. They're plastic, don't know how good they work because I personally don't use them, but you need a palette, okay? Cheap, and if you don't wanna get a wooden palette or a plexiglass palette, you can get one of these things here, which are pretty cool. Uh, it's called a gray pad. It's a uh, it's like wax paper, okay? And you can you can uh, put your paint on here, and it'll slip around nice and easy. This is twelve ninety nine. I paid for this, and I think I got this when I was in Florida or Los Angeles. I can't remember, but it was at a Michaels or a AC Moore or a Hobby Lobby. They all have similar things for similar prices. All right, so this was like thirteen bucks. Perfect. It has like fifty sheets inside it. And this works great. And it even has a little thing where you can put your hand inside and hold on to it and you know just do your thing. Perfect. And then when you're done, the cool thing is, is you just crumple it up and you and you throw it away. All right. All right. Next thing you're gonna need, let me just reach over and grab it, is you have to have an easel of some sort. Now you can spend all the way up to two or $300 on different easels, but I would just say, if you're just starting out, just get something cheap. This was like, again, like 10 or $12, all right? It folds up. I bring these with me when I travel around uh, for you know small things. If I was doing like a demonstration, I would bring a bigger easel, but, but this is cool if you're just like hanging out in your hotel room and you wanna you know paint something. This unfolds like this, and it's got these little wing things. For the larger canvases, you just kind of unfold them and boom, you can just take your canvas and, you know, put it on like that. And then there's these things in the back here. You just adjust them and then boom, you're in business right there. See? All right. And this is a 16 by 20, so you might be able to fit like an 18 by 24 on here, uh, but I wouldn't go much bigger than that. But these are super, super handy. And as a matter of fact, during the classes that I'm gonna be doing, I have about 30 or 40 of these, and these are the ones that um, we use in the classes that I provide for the people coming, because they are convenient, and when I'm done, they fold right up, nice and compact, perfect, like I said, and you just put it away. On to the next. I don't know why I didn't make this video. This is an easy video. All right, so the next thing you have to get, you're gonna need paint brushes, right? So I'm just gonna show you the ones that I use. So start off with a palette knife. This is a basic palette knife. I think it's a number 10 palette knife. Uh, this is what I use. It's real real firm and real strong. And uh, yeah, it's a perfect for, you know, mixing, painting, 
and all that stuff, all right? Just a palette knife. There's, there's several companies out there that sell them. Um, I will be having these shortly for sale. Palette knife, okay. Now I'm gonna go over the brushes that I have that, you don't need all of these brushes, but I'll start off with the ones that you should have. So the first one, these are all natural hair, natural bristle brushes. This is a two inch brush right here. And this is good for like getting your color, getting it on the canvas and just kind of whipping it around and you know doing your X's and, and all that. This helps distribute the paint, your background color, your sky, if you will, stuff like that. Okay, so you have a two inch and you also have a one inch brush here too. Does the same thing. You can use the one inch for a smaller canvas. You don't even need the two inch technically. Um, I use a one inch brush all the time, but it's convenient to have the two inch. So you have a one and a two inch brush and these kind of so many things uh, these will do. You can make bushes with these things. You can even make pine trees with these things. There's a lot you can do with these, okay? Those are the two main, you know, larger brushes, okay? And then you go into a filbert, okay? This brush here, you can make, I make all my trees, like my tree trunks, you know, my fatter trees with this filbert brush. Um, and you can also make little baby bushes with this thing, or you can sketch in your design on your canvas with the filbert is the one that I would use if I was sketching something. Um, so a filbert is handy for a lot of things. Or if you, you know, if you have a tree and you want to make little little baby leaves and you can just do little taps and stuff like that, it comes in handy. Filbert. This is a must-have brush right here. Next is a fan brush. Most of you. If you've ever painted before, you'll know that the fan brush is very great for making evergreen trees. Uh, but it's it's good for making the ripples and in your lakes and your waters, and and it's also great for making bushes when you push upward on on the fan brush. So without getting into too much detail, fan brush is right behind the filbert. It's a must-have. You must have that fan brush. It does so many so many great things for your paintings. So, all right, next. You can have a, this is like a synthetic brush right here, all right, and it's a, it's a little bit bigger than a half inch, but it's synthetic, it's soft, it's good for layering wet oil paint on top of oil paint because you get the paint on here and you can put another layer on top of something. So if you, if you make a dark area that would be like a bush in a painting with a filbert, let's say you scrub the color in, you can put some lighter highlight color on this, uh, on this flat brush, the synthetic, and then you can go right on there and put your light color on top of the dark. So in layman's terms, what this does is it distributes the paint onto, on top of other paint very, very easily. It doesn't cut through that first layer. So I would definitely recommend um, a synthetic flat brush or, or any kind of a synthetic soft haired brush. And I do sell all of these. I'm waiting for the kits to come back in. Um, but I do have a lot that I will be individually selling. I'm gonna put links below uh, in this video. Let me slide them out of the way. And here is a liner brush. This is good for little details. This is great for tree branches and just different things like that. Um, all the finer little detail work, uh, this comes in handy. Normally, you have to thin the paint down uh, to get those little details, but once you thin your paint down with some other form of a medium, you can go ahead and uh, make amazing things with this liner. This is a number two script liner. I'll have all the information for everything in this video in the description. Okay, so since we were talking about just details and, and thin paint, you're gonna need you're gonna need some something to thin your paint down. Now you can use baby oil, okay, which I use that from time to time. But one of the things that I use is this Gamsol, and Gamblin makes this product, and I like their products. I'll have their website and everything down in the description. But Gamsol is a, it's like an odorless paint thinner, and it thins the colors down real nice and like real like watery, and it allows you to load like that uh, that liner brush up and you can just get like little tree trunks and little tree branches and, and all kinds of stuff. So this is called Gamsol right here. Um, and it thins your paint down. So you're gonna, this is something you're gonna need, either this or baby oil, your preference, but I do use this, Gamsol, all right? Okay, so next, moving right along here. Moving right along. Okay, so you can also, so the Gamsol, let me put that back out here. When it comes time to clean your brushes, you're gonna need something to clean them, okay? So I, I generally will use this Gamsol because it makes the process pretty easy to clean. You just dip it in into a bucket, 
and just scrub it around and you know, wipe it off with a paper towel. Uh, just be careful because you need ventilation when you are using this. You should have, you know, make sure your windows are opened or some kind of ventilation fan or something like that. But also, you can use this linseed oil soap. This is made by a company called Treckle. And I actually didn't believe in this stuff at all until they sent it to me and I tried it. It actually does work pretty good. It works better than I thought because I've used other brush soaps before and I really didn't like how they, how they worked. Um, but I will say that this uh, linseed oil soap that Treckle makes, it actually really works good. So I'll have a link below for this too if you want to try this out. It's very inexpensive and it's a very good product and it's something that I use. So, so you have your Gamsol, you can use that to, to clean your brushes and you can also use this here, all right? Okay, now before I move on to that, let me just see if I can show you a description. So when I clean my brushes, I use this bucket right here, okay? It has a lid, it pops open like this. Let me just take the lid off. And inside this here, I have this screen right here and it actually just fits right inside that bucket perfectly. You just stick it right in there. So I'll take my brushes and I dip them inside the Gamsol, you know, and stick it right in there. And then you just kind of, you know, just go back and forth like this and just you, know, you get the excess paint off of there. And it has the lid so I can close it immediately when I'm done. It knocks all the, the paint off of it and then you just use a paper towel and just give it a quick wipe. It works so good. All right, so, so that's that. I got those at Walmart. It's like a little garbage can. And in the cooking section, just if you want to go there, buy the little bucket and then walk over to the cooking section and find a screen. I, I don't know if that's a fryer screen or what that thing is, um, but it's right at Walmart and it fit right in the bucket and it worked out perfectly, all right? Okay, so last but not least, you're going to need, you're gonna need paint. So I use Gamblin, okay? These are these cute little kits right here and they have all your colors in them. In this particular kit you have, you have white, a titanium white, obviously. Then you have ivory black, burnt umber. You have yellow ochre, sap green, Prussian blue, cad red light, and cad yellow light. You also have uh, solvent-free gel in here, which is awesome because that's like a medium. You put it on the canvas or you can mix it with white and you can go right to town and that kind of makes the paint slide around nice and uh, easily on your canvas. So. It's a really good product, so make sure that you know you go check Gamblin out too because they their paints are extremely thick and good, and they're very good for the wet on wet technique or the the oil painting technique that I'm doing. If you guys watch me, um, Gamblin paints have been by far the best. I've been using them almost since day one. Probably six months after I started painting, I started using Gamblin, and it was it was the best decision because the paint, the consistencies, everything is is very it's just very good and it, it's really gonna, I personally believe it's gonna help you if you're just starting out, it's gonna give you a better experience. It's not gonna be this thin, soupy paint or, you know, it's, gonna, it's just a good paint. So I'll, I'll make sure I have the information for this below. And I think, I think that's about it really. So those, those are the items that you're gonna need to start painting and that's it, you know, keep it basic the items that I just went over. You can even get away with a little bit less than what I showed you. You're just gonna need, a, you're gonna need paint, you're gonna need a palette. You're definitely gonna have some kind of, you know, Gamsol, okay, to clean, or the, or the linseed soap, okay? Um, went over brushes, all that stuff. It's super easy, you can't get discouraged. Um, yeah, just don't get discouraged, you know, just, when I started, you know, I, I got discouraged because it was, I just made this big mess and I, I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't have the proper instruction on what to get when I started. As a matter of fact, I didn't have all this stuff when I started. I had the wrong stuff, uh, the wrong type of canvas. I had the wrong brushes. If I would have just had this stuff, I think the experience would have been much better. So I hope this video helps. You know, if you got, whoever's on here watching this, if you're new, you know, just get, you know, get, you don't have to be exactly what I'm showing you here, but just make sure it's very close to what I'm showing you and your experience will be better. I wanna just try to reach as many people as possible and get as many people started doing this as I can because I really, really believe that the power of painting is a very, very strong thing. As a matter of fact, that's my website, thepowerofpainting.com 
is a website that I just recently incorporated into my website because it's something that I believe in. There's a lot of power with painting and most people that paint, it's because there's something else that either is going on in their life or something that happened in their life. So anyways, that's a whole, it's a whole nother video, but I hope, I hope that this helped you and I really want your experience to be the best possible. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below and I'll be glad to answer them or you can send me a message. Everything will be in the description. You can look me up on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. Obviously you're here on YouTube, uh, but leave a comment. I'll be glad to answer it for sure. Um, that's about it. Make sure that you like the video, subscribe, do all of the things and I will see you in the very next video. Take care guys. Have a great day. Cheers. Coffee. So good. I love coffee. See ya.